we condemn slavery what a big fat lie one of the names of your prophet Abid, the slave seller not only that your prophet actually he used if somebody he free a slave and he don't like it he forced him to be to, to be slave again and your prophet he used to have a lot of slaves just for fun especially from Ethiopia and those are not from war did Muhammad have a war and at the time of Aisha with the Ethiopian no so where the Ethiopian slaves are coming from they bought them I met Aisha I asked her about a Nabid Nabid making wine <laughs> Aisha she is an expert in wine that was served to Allah messenger Aisha and a woman they are talking about what is the wine you serve the Prophet of Allah Aisha called this the Ethiopian slave you see here they put it servant this is not a servant this is a slave Jaria and said ask her about it for it was uh, uh, he I mean this is translation her not he who prepared the Nabith for Allah messenger And here you will see that this is a wine. They cannot say this is not a wine. Who won the hadith? Who won the hadith? She tied it up to make it, you know, like this is how you make the wine. You know, you put, uh, 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 you put the juice and you tie it up in the heat and it's going to, you know, by time it's going to turn into something else. Hmm? So here, this is a, this is a servant to where Aisha she is getting her, is she is captured in a war, she's an Ethiopian. This is the hadith for the one who wanted it. That's post in the text. Let us see how many of you save reference. So later you don't ask me where this is from. All right. <clears throat> all of those look at those ethiopian slaves playing music for muhammad sahih muslim aisha reported that abu Bakr came to her and she was with her two girls what what kind of girls they are they are slaves in arabic it says jariyatan in English it says two girls but the fact it doesn't say two girls it says two slave girls do you see it liars 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 so do you see it Muslims why why in the translation it doesn't say two slaves what happened you ate the words the prophet he have a slave girls dancing for him playing music for him I thought the music is haram and the prophet is poor you see the prophet he don't go to the bar to enjoy uh, dancing girls uh, the bar come to him because he's very poor Right? All the translation, Islamic translation, is a lie. Look, we're in the Jawari, they translate Jawari as girls. Jawari is a slaves. <laughs> yeah, related to me from Malik, from etc., from. That a slave girls of Abdullah ibn Umar used to wash his feet and bring him meat of palm leaves while they were ministering. Malik was asked whether the man who had women and slave girls should have intercourse with them all before they do so before he washed his private part. He said there's no haram in man having intercourse with two of his slave girls before he does go to his a threesome yeah, you know where were those slaves coming from 
buying them, those are not kidnapped. And the Muslims were buying and selling slaves for centuries. Actually, until now, they have slaves. Mauritania is the biggest slavery country in the world. Libya, they have more than 20,000 African slaves as we speak now, and the world doing nothing about it. Saudi Arabia, you name it. Hmm? Slaves. Slaves all over. <clears throat> Look at the translation here. I mean, the translation, I want to show you a reference about slavery. Translation show nothing about slave. Where is the word slave here? I didn't see it. They, they do it on purpose. They do it on purpose. Look, here, some young girls singing. Uh, they entered upon Muhammad and he found some young girls singing. Why it says young girls singing? Those are young slaves singing. Like, do you, th do you think girls, they will go to the house of somebody and they sing for him? Who are they, those young girls singing to Muhammad? Is that American Idol? Do you see how they lie in the translation? Uh, some girls singing to the prophet. Why they are there? Why I don't have girls singing in my house? Let me open the door. Maybe some girls will walk by. So those girls who are singing to the prophet, who are they? Slaves. It says they are jawarin. Why you are saying they are just young girls? This is why we say we cannot trust any any Muslim explaining or answering about Islam. Again, if there is any Muslim, he claimed to be a scholar or a big sheikh, you have a long beard, you know. If you have a Facebook, if you have a, a YouTube, make a video there or post on Facebook, says, I want to debate Christian Prince, I will call you immediately. Today, tomorrow, every day, no problem. All what we are requiring, people who they are fit for such a conversation. We don't want to speak to kids who do not know how even to pronounce their prophet name. So if you are a Muslim and you know somebody, he is a qualified, please, we are looking for a qualified Muslims because as you see, you're a qualified, the qualified one with the long beard are liars and we got them busted, we got them busted in two seconds. I mean, look at this guy. When you see a guy in this age, he have a long beard. Uh, by the way, my beard is longer. That's why I got a ticket in the other day. The police stopped me. He says, you're a... Uh, your beard is coming out of the window of your car and blocking the highway. Imagine how, how long it is. And this is a true story, by the way. We can find it in Sahih al-Bukhari. But yet it is weak. Weak story. <clears throat> oh, boy. Look what the translation, I mean, look at the translation. I'm trying to show you reference. I don't know what to show you. All the words about slaves is gone. What, what is the... What, uh, like here we find a hadith about captured girls from the Byzantine. They are the blondie women. You know, those are the blondie. Uh, the blondie. That's why Muhammad, he says, attack the Romans so we can get the blondie girls.
All right. Look at this hadith. What if somebody he decide to free his slave? What Muhammad will do? A man, he freed his slave. And he had no other property except that. This is the translation of Muslims, not my translation. I'm not the one saying he's a property. So the Prophet canceled the freedom. Why? What is the business of Muhammad? What the Prophet did? The Prophet, the guy, he free his slave. Okay, he don't have anything. He owned nothing except this slave. Why you are... Why Muhammad is intervening? What's the problem? Should everybody have a slave? If I am a person who own a slave and I decide to let him go, why Muhammad intervene and he forced that slave to be a slave again? Any Muslim can tell us? Is that a da'if hadith? And we can find tons of stories like this. Not only he canceled the freedom, he took the slave and he sold him to a different person. What do you say? <laughs> 